Hi there, Prayer Plant Girl here. Well, we're back in the greenhouse. If you're new to my channel, I will just update you a little bit. I live in Saskatchewan, Canada, in the southern, kind of south central part of Saskatchewan, Canada. So it's uh, classified as growing zone 3B here in Canada. Uh, we get down around minus 35 in the winter. We have an average of about 110 frost free days. Um, and I grow vegetables in my garden that's just behind me back there and lots of flowers all throughout my yard. And I just built myself a greenhouse out of recycled windows. So in this video, I'm going to kind of go through the building process with you. I'm not a carpenter and I learned probably a lot of skills along the way here. I got a lot more comfortable on the ladder than I've ever been. And I think this is a huge endeavor for uh, me to have accomplished and I'm very happy to share it with you. So any of you who are looking to build something like this and are a little bit nervous to do it, this is uh, your chance to see that a very average person with very average skills can do this. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, come along and find out how I got this built. I did have some help along the way, but I did a lot of the work myself and I was involved in every piece of the process. I bought the wood on the 22nd and on the 26th, we were standing walls up. It's cold in here today. It's around zero degrees. I just put a little heater on the floor just so I could sit out here. The snow is fa softly falling, but boy, I am so excited to have this little space out in my yard that I can come in the winter it just amazes me that like less than two months ago, this wasn't even in my yard. Uh, I still have lots of finishing up to do, but uh, it's so fun to be able to come out here and talk to you sitting in my greenhouse and share the experience with you. Like I said, it wasn't quite two months ago. This wasn't even here yet. I purchased the wood for the greenhouse on September 22nd. If you saw my last video um, about the planning stages, you'll know that I already had the windows. I had them prepped and ready to go. I had plans that I had drawn up and designed on my own. And I'd had a carpenter, my brother, have a look at them just to make sure that uh, I knew what I was doing. I, I was still feeling pretty nervous. I wasn't really sure how I was going to do this on my own. People kept asking me if my brother, the carpenter, was going to build it. And I said, no, I'm going to do it. But I really, I knew I wasn't physically strong enough to do it all on my own. And I was going to need some help. But um, I was just hoping that I could get the majority of it done on my own and not impose on people too much. That's just my personality. I'm not good at asking for help. I purchased the wood on the 22nd of September. My mom came over that day and helped me. I'd been working on leveling out the area uh, the, the greenhouse is going to sit on and she knew I was just starting to get really overwhelmed with the idea of the whole build and the project and I was having trouble just feeling like I had the area leveled out and feeling like I could get it done so she just came over and just you know she helped me she did some digging she did some moving of dirt and uh, she just you know just made me feel confident in myself and helped me to just get it all leveled and then it was time to actually start cutting wood and start getting the structure built. My dad said he had time, he'd stop in. We started out with, um, I really, because you know I had drawn the designs and even though my brother had looked at them, I knew he hadn't gone through all the measurements and everything. I just asked him to have a quick look and just kind of, it was more to just make sure there was nothing glaringly wrong and uh, when I was looking at buying wood that I wasn't like way off on my estimates. So I was still just a little bit nervous. So we actually framed it out. What I wanted to do was frame it out on the ground, one wall at a time and just put the windows in as we were doing it. They weren't installed, but we kind of framed around the windows. If I, I said to my dad, I kind of want to build it like Lego. And he seemed to think that was a pretty reasonable idea and uh, would work well. So we set up on my patio because that's the flattest large area that I had to work on to do that. And I pulled out the, the table saw and the miter saw and circular saw and you know, all that kind of jazz. And, and we just started piece by piece. So, and started, we started with the first wall, which was a pretty basic wall. And it had only 
six real windows, a door opening, and then I had another opening above the door that I needed to put um, a piece of plexiglass in. And it had kind of like a tiny knee wall that was about a foot tall. So it was a pretty basic building and we just started with cutting out the, uh, the long framing that we needed. And then we put in the windows and made sure that we had the right sizes to put the, the boards between the between each window and we just kind of put it together like that and it actually came together fairly quickly once we kind of got a rhythm going. Um, my dad was working, the windows were all, not a single window was square when I got them. And my dad did a lot of work just trying to make the windows because none of them were exactly the same sizes, none of them were square and some of them were just really wonky. So he was actually um, going through and using the circular saw and um, kind of trimming up all the windows for me because I just did not feel good about doing that myself. Um, and then I was cutting all the wood and we'd get them put in and the two of us would kind of go one on either end and just screw them together. And mom was kind of running between us, just doing whatever we needed help with, grabbing windows for dad, uh, grabbing wood for me, grabbing screws, whatever we asked her, she ran and did it. And she also was a huge help through this whole process because my whole garden still needed to get cleaned up. And she was actually helping with that too when she didn't have other things to do. She was going out and cleaning out flower pots and trimming back annuals and just doing a lot of odds and ends. So they worked hard for me for a week. So we got that first front wall done that first uh, day. And that took us, uh, I don't know, maybe like an afternoon. It didn't take a whole lot of time, um, especially once we kind of got set up. So then we started in on the side walls and those were what I was the most worried about. My roof that I had designed is built at an angle, sloping from the front to the back and the side walls each have 10 windows in them. I designed the side walls identical, but besides the 10 windows, they, ha they have angle portions to them that I plan to put plexiglass in at the very top. So they wound up being like kind of triangular spaces, two triangular spaces at the top of the side walls. And I had been having trouble the whole way through just figuring out how that was going to work to get the top plate on the wall and make it all kind of fit together, figure out those angles, things that just seemed a little bit too complex for me. So dad and I spent a lot of time just kind of laying things out. Uh, we got the, the, the height we knew exactly what height we needed for the front wall. We measured what we had wound up with with the front wall, which actually worked exactly as my plans, I believe. And then we went back to, we put all the windows in and figured out what, what I wanted for the back wall and that worked. We put all the pieces together and then we figured out the top board uh, for the wall and figured out the framing and how it was going to work with the windows and we decided to actually bump the side wall that little kind of knee wall that I said I had in the front was a, a foot tall we bumped that down I think um, I think it's at seven inches now so we bumped it down about five inches I think is what we wound up and that made everything just come together and work well so we didn't have to cut because I was thinking we were gonna have to cut the top edge of some of my taller windows and that was going to make it a little bit sketchy as to how well they held together. They are old kind of rickety windows, some of them. Uh, but we managed to make it all come together, put our heads together and made it work. So we got the, that first wall, the first side wall done. And it probably took us close to a whole, whole day. Um, I think mom and dad showed up around 10 in the morning. And I think it was four or five until we got that done. You know, a little lunch break and... Uh, yeah, we had that wall done. So then the next day that we got together, we built the second side wall. And now that we have the first one as a guide to show us what to do, that second one went together so much easier and so much faster. And I, I think it only took us a few hours to throw that one together. And then I, we put the back wall together that day. I mean, the back wall was really simple. There wasn't really, there was one window going into it. Um, Mom and Dad had brought that window in because it was actually a window they had. Uh, so they brought it in. So we just framed around that window and put some upright framing in it, like joists in it, I guess, I think it's called. Like I said, not a carpenter. And the top plate, you know, some support for the window frame. And that's all we needed. Now, because it was such a 
you know, it was mostly just like a top plate with a bunch of legs hanging down off of it. Um, and our base plate was going to be built right on site and leveled on site just to make it easier. So we didn't have that to attach those bottom legs to to keep it all square. So we actually just screwed a two by four or two by six, I can't remember, whatever we had laying around. We just screwed one kind of sideways across all those, um, those legs that were coming down towards the bottom just to hold them in place and make it more sturdy so we could move it into place later and it didn't get really knocked out of, out of square and get too crazy. And that was amazing. So it took, what was that, like three days of building and the walls for this structure that I had been so worried sick about, I'd been fretting about, we had them built. They were framed they were ready to go. So they were laid out on my grass and we just needed to stand them up. So then we uh, found a day and my husband was available and my parents were both available and it wasn't crazy windy out. Uh, Dad and I worked on just getting the, the four by fours that we used for a base for the, each of the walls. We got those cut to the size that we needed. We got them laid down because of the work that mom and I had already put in. They were pretty level already. So we just did a little bit of tweaking on that and we had the base, we screwed it together and we had the base ready and level to go. We just needed to stand the walls up. So I guess there was four of us then out there working on it and really it didn't take all of us, uh, which was good. Um, my husband was actually had an injury so we didn't really want him doing a lot of heavy work but we just kind of wanted him in case we really needed him. Um, but we were actually able to stand these walls up pretty well. We started with the back wall we put it in, we made sure that it was all square because like I said, it had those little dangly legs hanging. So we wanted to make sure it was all square and screwed down to that base plate and um, set up properly. And then we brought in the sidewalls and attached one at a time. We attached them down to the base plate, attached them to the back wall, and the next one we put up and then the front. And it was, it went so smoothly. It was, it was just, crazy like we were worried that we were going to have to like put bracing up we had boards ready to brace the walls thinking that they they wouldn't be sturdy until we got it all put together but it actually really just was just stood up so easily we were lucky it was a really calm day that day if you had watched my earlier video you know that when i consulted with my brother about my plans i was very not sure how to do the roof and he had kind of drawn up just a really loose little sketch for me and talked to me about it and it all made sense at the time but that was months earlier, I think like April, May. And in that time, I had kind of lost the vision that he had. And I'd also changed my sidewalls a little bit. So we decided to call in the expert, <laughs> phone a friend, phone my brother, and we had him pop over and just have a look now that we had the whole structure standing and see if he could just discuss the roof with us once more. I kind of thought I had another plan that was similar to his, but even more simple now that we had changed the roof a little bit or the sidewalls a little bit and yeah when he came by he was like yeah that's what you need to do so it was just a matter of kind of building a frame that attached to the exterior on the top of the each wall and then putting in some cross beams side to side and then some bracing front to back between those cross beams really simple so i needed to buy more wood so i I headed off uh, to the, the hardware store and picked up another small load of wood so we could get that done. So it was a very hot day the day we got to building the roof. So dad and I are up on ladders. We're trying to get this, this wood in and uh, we were just working on those last pieces and it was just, it wasn't really hard work. I mean, we figured out the angles and that, we both struggled with that a little bit, but we had got that figured out and uh, that was the hardest part. Then we were just up on ladders trying to get it all screwed together and cut pieces measure and, and get it all in but i tell you we got to those last few boards and i just said to dad you know what when we get this roof done when we get this framing done we're going for ice cream dad and i are both fond of ice cream and so that was our motivation and we got it done and we had a treat after the dog came in he had a little inspection and he seemed to think it was all good i was starting to worry he was thinking i was building him the best dog house ever but once I got it closed in, he hasn't really wanted to be in here too much. So once we um, had that roof up, you know, that was kind of, that was the, the big job there. We had all the framing done. I had a structure standing here. I just needed to, 
to kind of close it in, right? So that was that was the end of September. It took us like a week, I think, to get that framing done. This thing I'd put off and fretted with for so long. So the whole structure to this point was made with pressure treated lumber. And one thing to note if you're going to tackle a project like this and you need to use pressure treated lumber is to make sure that you're using screws for pressure treated lumber. Um, that was something that um, my brother had stressed to me. Uh, regular screws or nails or whatever fasteners you choose to use are not um, designed for pressure treated lumber and they will deteriorate and uh, break. So that's just a side note. I think it's important that you should know that uh, so that if you start a project like this, you know to get the proper fasteners because you don't want to put this kind of money and work into something and have the fasteners fail on you in a couple of years. Another thing with pressure treated lumber is they say not to paint it for a year, not to stain it for a year. I know the owner of the hardware store where I was getting my product from and I really wanted to stain the framing before I had to put the windows in because it would be just so much easier. Otherwise, there's gonna be large pieces of the framing that weren't ever going to get stained because I'd have to pull all the windows out, pull everything apart. After consulting with him, he said, yeah, he thought it was safe to do so. You know, like they say it can peel off if the wood's very damp or whatnot, um, but he figured it, sh it should be okay. So I purchased the stain. I went with a solid stain. Um, I think the color is called bluff wood. Um, and I think it's duck back stain, but I spent a couple of good days staining and uh, again, beautiful, hot September weather. And I was able to get it all stained and dry um, and all of that while I was also still, like I said, working on getting my garden and my yard cleaned up because it was fall. <laughs> but uh, I got that all done. And then what was the next thing I worked on? The next thing I did, I have notes here. When I purchased the stain, I also had ordered um, metal roofing. I had wanted to put metal roofing on this. I thought it would be the, the easiest thing for me. I wouldn't have to be dealing with shingling or anything. Uh, metal roofing is very long lasting. I just, I, once I got it on there, I wasn't gonna have to worry about it. And I wouldn't have to be hauling up like sheets of plywood or anything. You don't need to have like plywood underneath your metal roofing. So I could just put it right to the framing and it was much easier for me to handle that way. So I had ordered the metal roofing. I had to wait for it to come in, which was I think less than a week. That won't be the case everywhere. Some places will just have someone in stock, but um, they actually took the measurements and it was cut right to the length that I needed and uh, all the extra trim pieces that I needed. And I do not know the names of all of those things, but uh, I got all the like kind of outside edge things to go around the wood framing that I needed uh, to close it in really nice. Um, there's also little foam bits that you put um, because metal ridging has, metal roofing has little ridges in it. So there's little foam pieces that go between the, the top plate of the structure and the, the ridges in the, the roofing so that no bugs uh, or anything can get in and also, you know, keep air from coming through. I got all that, it all came in. I went and picked it up and um, brought it home and we got to work. By then my husband was able to give me a hand with that part of it. So we just uh, started working on it. And now we mistakenly through doing some looking at uh, YouTube and things. And most videos that you'll find for metal roofing is for like a, an A-frame kind of roof. And so with those, you would start with the front plate of your building and do that front part first and so that's what we started and then we got up and we realized that's not right for this type of roof so if you're going with a roof that's angled just in one direction you need to get your roofing on first and then put all those uh, front and side and back plates on so we pulled it all off and put the roofing on but uh, that goes pretty easily um, and we just screwed it all down the hardest part is just reaching it because you're up on ladders with little screws and reaching across metal roofing and like I said I didn't have like a a plywood base on it so you couldn't like be on the roof totally you know we had to make sure you knew where the the bracing and everything was and and make sure you weren't going to go through the roof it was really supposed to get windy that night we had a real windstorm that night and we got most of the roof done but that last panel um, needed to be cut it was too wide which 
is just they come in, I can't remember if it's three foot or four foot, foot width, so it's just how they come standard. And uh, we knew that was going to wind up being the case, but you can't like really overlap them or really get moisture between the panels. So we got what the full panels on that we could get on and we had to call it quits. It was too dark. We just couldn't do it anymore. Um, and so we had a windstorm and I, really, I don't think I slept that night because I was so worried the wind was going to get under that roofing and rip it off or wreck something because of course the windows weren't even in yet. Like the wind was just blowing through this whole structure. But it all held together and it did really well. And uh, the next morning I came out and I did my measurements and I started cutting the, uh, the last piece of metal in half lengthwise so that we could get it up. And I was able to get it cut and up and secured down. And uh, we got the, the outside edges all covered up with the last pieces of metal. Is it flashing? I don't know. The little pretty pieces on the outside edges. Got that all up and in place, and I was very happy about that. Now, I didn't put a piece on the back, because I plan on putting gutters back there, and for what this is, again, you know, this isn't, isn't a house. Uh, it's just a greenhouse, and I was gonna have that gutter there to catch the water and keep the weather off. It's facing north. It's not gonna get a lot of wind in our area there. It was, you know, protected by fence, so we didn't, we didn't put that piece on. It just saved a little bit of money. And a little bit of work but yeah so then I had my roofing on and the whole structure up and it was time to to move on to kind of making it closed in and, and, and making it what it is so I uh, started with getting that vinyl window for mom and dad's in because that was the one that I wasn't sure how to get installed so I wound up cutting little pieces of wood to go it had channels in it um, so I put little pieces of wood that would fit in the channels. One I screwed right down to the framing so I could kind of stand the window, kind of lean the window over that uh, wood there and it would hold in the channel. And the other, and then I cut two pieces that went in the side channels. So before I stood the window in, I stuck them in the side channels and then I screwed through into those side pieces through the framing of the greenhouse and into that uh, window that way. And I, I don't know if those little pieces of wood are necessary, but it made me feel better. Because um, that window had originally been inside of a different frame that my parents didn't have. So it was just supposed to be installed a little bit different. Then I realized that the piece of metal roofing that I had cut off, that I had extra now, was exactly the width of my greenhouse for the back. It fit up the wall of my greenhouse almost right to that window. So I put that metal roofing across the bottom of the greenhouse and then I filled in, I used just pressure treated fence boards uh, to cover in the back everywhere else that didn't have metal roofing or that window. They were just, it was just covered in with fence boards. And I got most of those cut and then when I got to a point where I was gonna have to kind of trim them down a little bit, um, I just waited to see if I would have any scrap pieces from other parts of the greenhouse build that I could cut uh, before I went slicing fence boards lengthwise. I was trying to be as frugal as I could with the wood that I had and not have a bunch of little bits and pieces left over that weren't necessary. So I got most of the back framed in, uh, closed in and I started putting in the smaller windows for the sides. So I just started with, uh, I think I started uh, with the, the upper row and worked my way down. I can't remember, but I got all the, all those side windows in on my own, except that I have a couple that are hinged and I tried to put one in on my own. It's actually behind me here. I did it on my own, but it just, it doesn't swing right. So I left the other one and um, I have a couple of pieces of plexiglass. There's one back there that I had to cut. The very last window there is actually plexiglass. And of course, a matching one on the other one, wall. And the upper parts, um, those triangle pieces. So those weren't closed in. I needed to cut that plexiglass. And um, I was still kind of just putting that off. So I tried to figure out how I was going to do it. So I got most of the sides closed in. The roof is now closed in. The back is mostly closed in. It was starting to look like a greenhouse. The um, Front windows were just a little bit too big for me to manage on my own. Oh, and I might have had a couple of windows on the sides that weren't quite just still fitting right and needed a bit of trimming. So those weren't in actually yet either. 
But my dad came again. He's really been, I think, enjoying this come together and working on it with me. We had a lot of fun together. And um, it was at that point that I realized my father-in-law owns a small planer. And we got that out to finish up the rest of the windows that were just a little bit wonky and not fitting right. That's the way to go. Don't mess around with saws and things if you just need a little bit. If you're doing a project like this, get a small planer. This was an electric planer. I'll see if I can find a link for you and put it down in the bottom for something similar or maybe the same one. I'm not sure uh, if I can find that. But uh, it was the best thing ever. And I think a lot of my windows would have fit tighter and been better if we'd have had that right from the beginning for trimming the windows. But we didn't and we made work what we had work. But uh, anyways, my dad came by and I think we spent one more day kind of messing around, I don't even know if it was a full day, messing around with the windows and got the rest all fit in properly. And I have the top, top two windows on the front are hinged. And so that took a, the two of us kind of on either side to, took a, to get those hinged in there and screwed in, you know, holding the window so the hinges swung properly. And uh, yeah, I had my windows in and I just needed to cut the plexiglass and get it installed, finish up the little bit of boards on the back, finish up the boards. Um, I had them all kind of sitting along the bottom, but I didn't actually have them all totally screwed in and figured I had to cut a few lengthwise in half for those bottom pieces and I had to get a door. So it was really coming together. My mom remembered that they had a door from an old um, kind of lean-to garage that they used to have and she you know, realized in one of their barns that they had this old door still sitting there. So she brought it, she'd asked me about it, messaged it to me, and I knew it wasn't quite the right dimensions I needed, but I thought, well, maybe I could make it work. So they actually brought it into me and uh, I mucked around with it for a few days and kind of played around with it uh, to try and figure it out and just kind of had it stewing in my brain while I worked on the plexiglass. So again, I had to cut angled plexiglass uh, to make little triangle pieces and then I needed a couple of small rectangle pieces. And I tried a few different methods. So I found a lot of YouTube videos online that said to just score it with a knife uh, and keep doing that. And I tried that and I was just breaking them. So some said you could use a circular saw or you could use um, a jigsaw and they broke. I was just smashing whole pieces, melting it. It was getting the, oh, the jigsaw just gummed up. It was a disaster. Don't do that. If you have access to a table saw, put your blade really low. So it just barely, barely bites into that plexiglass and run your plexiglass through there. Wear long sleeves. If you have, like, put a hat on, put on safety glasses for sure, because it is going to spit hot, melted plastic at you. <laughs> but it gave me the cleanest cuts with the least amount of breakage. Most of the time, I could just cut it right through. Sometimes they would kind of melt back together a little bit in these cuts, because you're really, more than cutting through it, you're just kind of, the hot blade is melting through it but uh, then you could just kind of snap it and break it and it just worked, I would say, almost flawlessly doing it that way. So you got, I got, I had so much little bits of plexiglass all over me. It was like, I swear, embedded in my clothing. It burnt any skin. Well, I mean, it didn't leave like marks or anything, but it kind of hurt when it hit the skin a little bit, but it was the best method. A little bit tricky for cutting triangular pieces, but uh, by then, after all this building, I had gotten pretty familiar with the table saw and I was pretty confident and able to do that. So I got those pieces, they're cut, they're in. Um, I have some little bits of trim that I've cut down and painted over time while I was working all this. And so they're, they're put in there, they're not perfect, but they're in there, they'll be there for the winter. And uh, once the snow melts and I can get the table saw out and work easily with it again, I'll have to do some more finishing on things like that. But I also need to do some finishing around my other windows as well. So I'll get that done, but it probably won't be till spring. 
So now I had everything done uh, except the door and I really needed to just decide what I was going to do with the door. By this point I had probably gone through about four or five different versions of how I was going to build this door and every time I thought I had the perfect version I was ready to go. And then something would come up and I would change my mind and redesign it completely. Um, but I really wanted to use that old door that mom and dad had. I just thought it was kind of neat to be able to use that wood that they had um, and just kind of have that little piece from the farm in my greenhouse. So I mucked around with plans and figured and faddled and had a lot of different ideas, but I wound up just pulling the whole thing apart and reusing a lot of the wood from it and combining that with other scraps of wood basically that I had laying around and a couple of pieces of plexiglass and I got a Dutch door built for my greenhouse. Because that's what I really wanted was a Dutch door. My husband helped me to get it hung um, so that it's hanging in there nicely and I have just the very most basic of hardware on it right now while I kind of decide exactly what I want for closures on it. Um, but I think I'll make a separate video on how I put together that door. So that's where I was left. I had my whole greenhouse closed in at this point. It had taken me, let me see, what was the date on there? I bought the wood on September 22nd and on October 20th, I had the door hung and my whole greenhouse was closed in. So very exciting, about one month from actually getting the wood to having a full closed in structure. Luckily, I had a full closed in structure because three days later, we had our first blizzard of the season and my build has not progressed much from there because any of the finishing work that I was planning on working on, I couldn't get the, I can't easily haul the saws out to the backyard. It's covered in snow. There's not enough room in the greenhouse to be working with uh, big saws and things. And I just don't want to be running things back and forth from the garage trying to do this. So the, a lot of this is going to wait until next, uh, next spring when things thaw out. But for now, I'm going to enjoy this space. I'm going to get some shelves in here. I'll still be able to use it in the spring. And I'll still be out here puttering away, doing little things over the winter. I'm really pleased with how this structure turned out. I hope this video uh, shows you that even the most the people with the most basic of building knowledge uh, could build a structure like this and maybe encourages you to uh, find yourself some windows and uh, figure out a plan and start building. If you haven't seen my uh, planning video, I'll put a link to it but down below and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. If you enjoyed hearing about how this greenhouse came together, make sure that you give me a thumbs up on this video. And if you want to know more about what I'm doing in my garden through the seasons, hit that subscribe button.